Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for this uh, very, to this very thoughtful panel. Um, I remember from economics, we learned that with five economists, there would usually be like seven different opinions in the same room. But I, I felt they were very aligned and also related to the importance of uh, growth. So dear participants, uh, what an incredible and impactful week this has been. On behalf of uh, Professor Schwab, uh, Klaus, our executive chairman and founder, the managing board, and myself, a big thank you to you. Over the past several days, progress has been made on scaling climate ambition, driving more equitable growth, and unlocking the benefit of frontier technologies. For me, the greatest lesson of the week has been that although the world is more fragmented today, it does not need to be tomorrow. By coming together like this, we can shape a more collaborative future. As we just heard from the panel, avoiding a recession and building a solid growth agenda is critical and it is doable to stop the fragmentation of the global economy. Hence, the forum launched a future growth consortium to champion a new framework for growth this week. More than 350 million people are being reached with better skills, jobs, and education through commitments made as a part of the forum's reskilling revolution. Remember, we promised to do it uh, for a billion people, and we are on track. The Jobs Consortium is moving forward, implementing a new vision for a better future of work. The Good Work Alliance is working to build a resilient, equitable, and human-centric future of work. And the new Global Parity Alliance, a global coalition of 250 CEOs, ministers, and other leaders, is working to renew growth and resilience through diversity, equity, and inclusion. Our work has also been focused on advancing greater global resilience. The Resilience Consortium launched decisive the momentum to build resilience paper and held a high-level dialogue on investing in infrastructure for resilience and clearly made it and underlined that the cost of inaction when it comes to resilience far exceeds the cost of action. USAID announced its new 50 million private sector engagement fund to support socially responsible practices in business operations and supply chains. And we work to make, we work to make global trade systems stronger and more equitable because it's a linchpin for growth and resilience. More than 50 countries launched a coalition of trade ministers on climate this week to drive inclusive cooperation among trade ministers in the global response to climate change. A new partnership was formed between the UAE and the Forum to accelerate trade tech solutions for global commerce. We also foresaw the first indigenous-led discussion in Davos on securing better trade outcomes for indigenous peoples. We also doubled down on accelerating climate action. The First Movers Coalition, this coalition that we formed with President Biden in the run-up to Glasgow, where you use the purchasing powers of the big companies in the world to green their supply chain, has now grown from 35 companies to 70 companies, and we added Canada and the UAE as government partners. We also saw a new forum initiative related to Forum Chief Sustainability Leaders Community. It was launched and 60 CSOs came together to further action on sustainability and transformation. The Forum also signed a new partnership with the government of Indonesia to support its ambition to scale blue carbon restoration 
and ocean conservation efforts. And a one trillion tree organization, 1T.org, as you know, welcome two additional pledges taking the initiative to over 80 companies committing more than 7 billion trees in over 65 countries in 2030. I was also heartened to see progress on the current energy and food crisis. A new initiative, Gaia, giving to amplify earth action, will leverage philanthropic capital to help generate the three trillion US dollars needed each year from public and private sources to tackle climate change and nature losses. Nine leading industrial clusters in China, Indonesia, Japan, Spain, and the US have joined the forums transitioning industrial clusters towards net zero initiative to help industry reduce emissions. The Global Battery Alliance launched a proof of concept for its battery passport to help facilitate the rapid scaling of sustainable, circular, responsible battery value chains. Important steps have also been taken to support global public health. 39 organizations this week signed Global Health Equity Network Zero Health Gaps Pledge and committed to take concerted action to advance health and equity globally. The World Economic Forum also launched its first thematic center on healthcare and life sciences in Telangana, India. As leaders, we grapple to address the complexities and interconnected challenges when it comes to innovation and technologies. And we took initiatives also in this field. The Forum unveiled a new center for trustworthy technology in Austin, Texas, to promote responsible production and use of emerging technologies such as AI, machine learning, blockchain, virtual reality, and quantum computing. The new global cybersecurity outlook report that was presented provided a roadmap for leaders as they grapple with new cybersecurity threats. Ten water focused entrepreneurs were chosen winners of the Forum's Global Freshwater Innovation Challenge for their solutions to improve freshwater resilience in the face of climate change and restore water quality around the world. And the Schwab Foundation from this platform for social entrepreneurs awarded 16 organizations for their innovative approach and potential for global impact, joining a community of 435 innovators operating in 190 different countries. Congratulations to the chairperson, Hilda Herr. Schwab. As the panel also touched on, the war in Ukraine also um, is one of the big, big challenges of our time. And we also paid attention to the war during this week, and leaders discussed how to scale up the labor market integration of Ukrainian refugees based on new lessons from the Forum's Refugee Employment and Employability Initiative. And the forum continues to support the dialogue between private sector leaders and Ukraine's political leadership to support reconstruction efforts. And uh, Kristalina, you were also at the CO for Ukraine initiative meeting again. It was 70 CEOs in the room with the first lady and ministers really looking at how we can support also to avoid a total humanitarian catastrophe unfolding in Ukraine. And we work to unlock progress in different conflicts areas in the world, in the Middle East. We continued our work for reconciliation between Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, you know this uh, initiative that we have worked on for many years. And private sector Palestinian and Israeli leaders today came together this morning and endorsed the communique, reinforcing their commitment to supporting the Palestinian economy. 
and we brought leaders together to strengthen the dialogue in the Western Balkans and to address the political crisis in Myanmar. We also accelerated efforts to strengthen regional collaboration. The forum convened global business leaders for the third meeting of the forum's friends of the African continental free trade area and agreed to develop an action plan for strengthening implementation of this agreement. If successfully implemented, it can create 30 to 40 million new jobs in the coming years in Africa. I'm so heartened our community of young leaders has been working together to forge solutions also this week. And uh, more locally, it is also great to see that we will have a Global Shapers Hub now in Davos. So the Davos Hub of Young Global Shapers were, was formed, and I think some of you are here in the room today too. So congratulations. <laughs> Finally. I know it's been a long list, but we're very proud of it. You also show that this has been a working meeting where we have rolled up our sleeves. Finally, the forum in partnership with Accenture and Microsoft unveiled a working prototype of the global collaborative collaboration village, a purpose-driven metaverse where organizations can convene to action on the world's most pressing challenges. So, as I said, I'm so proud that we close this meeting on such a positive note with uh, so much energy. I hope it fuels our actions and ambitions in the year ahead. Because in an uncertain and challenging time, one thing is clear. We can shape a more resilient, sustainable, and equitable future, but the only way to do so is together. Thank you.